have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 221 of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. I am your host, the two-time reigning, defending, undisputed Scholars of Wrestling Champion, Scholar Tarek, and with me is the former champion, Scholar Brian. Hello, Brian. Sad Panda. Mm. Hey, <laughs> hold your head up high. You had a pretty good title run. One successful title defense is good. Shut up. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> well, don't worry. I, I actually have plans for you. I'm going to make this title reign a very interesting one because I'm going to do something that none of us have ever done in the Scholars of Wrestling. I'm going to give you a rematch. Oh, I am, snap. <laughs> you're, I'm going to put in the rule that you can induct your rematch clause to go for the Scholars of Wrestling Championship at the next event, which I guess it's Super I Showdown. I, 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 if if they put it up on the website as an as a actual card like they did Greatest Royal Rumble, yes, I will induce my rematch for Super Showdown. If not, something... <laughs> no, if not, it's going to have to be... Evolution. <laughs> oh no, it's definitely not going to be evolution. <laughs> Trust me, I have my own plans for evolution. Uh, and but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But until then, I'm doing something that Jeff never did to me when he won the Scholars of Wrestling Championship. You never did for Jeff when you won the Scholars of Wrestling Championship. But I can't. I can't say that I didn't because I was the first ever champion. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I had to steal the title from Jeff in order to even get the shot in the first place. So, so yeah. So, no. I wasn't going to give him a rematch. He was going to have to steal the title back from me in order to get a rematch. All right. But, so, you know what? You beat me fair and square. So. Rematch? Rematch. Set in stone. Jeff isn't here to argue this. Ha <laughs> so now it is... The champion with the former champion. And now, for that I finally have this back on my shoulder, you can't deny, Jeff can't deny, that I am the undisputed scholar. I have whoa, whoa, the championship. Whoa, whoa. I have. No, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. I could deny it, but... I'm also, I could deny it in character, because I'm stupid, <laughs> but basically, okay, as of right now, yes, you do have the most accolades of the scholars. You do. I'm not gonna attempt to deny that, but I could. <laughs> but you would I'd be, be wrong. wrong. You would I'd, be wrong. I'd be wrong. As much as Jeff was trying to deny it, he's the one, he's the one that's most vocal on me not being the undisputed scholar. But my accolades say a different story. And now, when you look at me in the current position I am, I am currently in. I have the belt, and if I lose the belt, I have the briefcase to win that said belt anytime I want. I have it all. I have everything that anyone could possibly want in the Scholars of Wrestling show. Nobody can touch me! Oh, oh, going a little too far there, Chief. All right. Yes, you I know. Had me, you had me up until that last sentence. I was with you. Oh, there. no, you. Nobody can touch you? We'll see about that in two weeks. Oh, no, no. no okay, in two weeks, sure. I'm not, but as of right now, you can't touch me. Okay, you can physically touch. touch me. But you know you know what I mean. You know what I mean. You had to think about that for a second. Oh, no, I, I already knew. What, trust me. When I was planning on what to say on this, I knew that at least one of you was going to touch me. Like, <laughs> yeah. poke me. I knew exactly what you were going for because I can, I can read you. I can read Jeff because in the long run, you and Jeff cannot deny that when it comes to being a true scholar... You're both are looking up to me because I have done it all. I will continue to brag that right. You are now both 
trying to continue to build up your accolades to get to my level because I'm already there. Move on. He knows I'm right. That's why he's trying to change the topic. But you know what? Being the champion, being the undisputed scholar that I am, he's absolutely right. We should move on. We had a very interesting weekend, which was WWE Hell in a Cell 2018. And it was basically a tale of two shows. Really, when you think about it. It's Raw and SmackDown, so yes, it is a tale of two no, shows. No, but you know, I mean, like, <laughs> there were some very, very good parts, and there were some very, very bad parts. So There were... But I will... I more will on the it. side of good. Yes. More on the side That's of good. That's exactly what I was going to say. But when this show was bad, it was pretty bad. <laughs> That's it. To be perfectly honest, if I were to count all the bad things that were in this mat, in this event, I probably would give it a, maybe at least two, three tops. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going... This, this, this was exactly what we said. It, it, we said it was going to outperform the way that it was booked heading in. Oh. We said that it, this show had no business being as good as it actually was based on the way that they built up the pay-per-view. Based or on the way of. based on the way they built up the pay-per-view, it's like we're just gonna throw shit over there and we'll see if it sticks. It's well guess even... what? Guess what? It stuck. Honestly, <laughs> it was it. even more there's even more to it than that because yes, this event was coming up. But you also had the Super Showdown, which they were promoting like crazy with Undertaker and Triple H. You had the first ever WWE Women's Event Evolution that's coming up. And now you have the Saudi Arabia event, which is Crown Jewels. Yeah. Speaking, it's, speaking of which, yeah, but first, first, you, first you got great balls of fire. Now you got Crown Jewels. Vince McMahon just loves bragging about his testicles, apparently. Yes. Okay. Dick humor. <laughs> More like balls humor. Yeah. Testicle humor. Yeah. How old is he, man? 72 years old, and he's still thinking with his testicles. All right. But enough about Vince McMahon's Keyword. testicles. Keyword, man. <laughs> let's, 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 let's go ahead and get right into uh, Hell in a Cell. Let's first go into the pre-show, which I'm not going to lie. I actually didn't watch this match. Uh, Rusev Day versus The New Day. I did see highlights. I can't even say it was disappointing. As soon as they put it on the pre-show, I knew how this was going to go. It did... Talking on the uh, Scholar Jeff talking like on the main show, it was gonna do anything. This was exactly what I expected from this match. If even if it was on the main show, okay, R not even thinking about what was gonna happen on SmackDown this week, I was like, there's no way the New Day loses on their first title defense. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. And and the, the I should have thought about that later on, but hey, I I had thoughts in my head. But as of now, but this match was exactly what I expected of it. And you know what? With the talent involved, I'm actually disappointed in this match. Like it, I, I did I did not like it. I will say, one thing I when I compare certain matches, something that's well documented on this show. This, this, this match in particular was definitely the storytelling aspect. And it, even, it wasn't even... It's, the main story was Rusev Day. It did, New Day was just a part of it. They were just... Because they're the tag team champions, they get the title match. They, get, they have to defend their titles. The whole story was about Rusev Day. And the whole story of Aiden English, because, uh, because of the tournament... And the, he was the main factor in them actually getting this title match in the first place. The, the ego started kind of building up in his head where he tagged himself in. Oh, he was refusing the tag to Rusev. The seeds were just planting their inevitable breakup, which led to them losing, even though Rusev tried to make the save. But Big E was just like, nope, I got your leg. It's almost as big as my arm, apparently. <laughs> uh, yeah, led to them losing. And going to SmackDown, 
I, I just feel like the actual turn should have been at the pay-per-view. Well... That, because here's, here's the deal, okay? I, I get that this is a storytelling match. Okay, but... Still, without the turn at the end to spice it up, like, I, I just felt nothing at the end of the match. Like, I didn't care about anything leading forward. I was like, at the end of this, oh, so they're going to do the turn on SmackDown, huh? I did, so, it, it, when he did actually turn on SmackDown, I was like, oh, in, instead, of act, instead of actually being mad... At, Rus- at, at Aiden English like they want me to be I'm just like oh predictable go on well, move on <laughs> well uh, at, first, when, at first when you first see it it actually wasn't fully predictable for me on, on Smackdown cause well one thing the fact that Rusev is getting a United States title match against Shinsuke Nakamura was something that I even brought up on the prediction show last week like oh give him a singles run have him fight for the United States title well Apparently, someone Let's in get WWE that out of the way right now. <laughs> Apparently, someone in WWE actually listened to this show, and they're like, you know what? That's actually a good idea. Let's, let's use the United States title match to break up this team. And the whole idea with one thing, uh, Aiden English at first saying that, oh, he was the reason the New Day is so popular, which, to be fair, he, he's not wrong. You mean Rusev Day? Or getting Rusev Day over. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the song is what got it yeah, over. The song did get it over, so he, he's not wrong. And, of course, they have to do that whole high school drama bullshit that Lana heard him say that. And then Rusev's like, I, will you, I'll hear what you have to say like, in a little bit. Aiden, let's all go down to the mat. Let's all go down together. And then you just see Aiden getting into the big cheer and then when he finally pulled the microphone and was just going Rusev Day it was all just a plant like that was that was the heel turn you would think oh he was just getting he was just getting so into getting the crowd cheering for Rusev but no he was getting Rusev he was getting Rusev distracted on purpose just so Shinsuke can get the roll up and continue basically having zero feuds and now we got Aiden English turning on Rusev Immediately after. So are they building this to maybe like a triple threat for the United States title? I or actually, are they... That's actually not a bad idea. I actually didn't think of that. That's yeah. actually good. Because I, not... I mean like they're finally, they finally have Aiden English in a place where he should have been a long time ago. They have Rusev who is more over than he's ever been. And you have Shinsuke, who's got nothing going on right now. That actually would be an interesting triple so threat storyline. So add a title into a personal blood feud, and boom, there you go. You have a you have a match for. Uh, yeah, but yeah, you have the blood feud. You have pretty much someone who can pour gasoline into that fire with the third wheel being Shinsuke Nakamura. Right. And if anything, this could hopefully lead to something like give, even give a character tweet to uh, Aiden English. Yeah. Because he actually, like, even though it, the fir- his first initial singles run, it was just because of uh, his breakup. He, with was the getting puni- he was getting punished because of, of Simon what Gotch. Simon Gotch did. Yeah, he was still pretty much fresh off of being a part of a tag, a singles man being part of a tag team. Now. He did something on his own, granted with a tag team, but he became his own guy. It became two sing- It actually did become two singles guys becoming a tag team with Aiden English and Rusev. But it, when you really look at Rusev Day as a team, here's the scholars' quick talk for you. God, we're still on the prediction show on this one, but there is still there is a lot to talk about with this. Mm-hmm. Do you think they could have done a lot more with the Rusev Day stable? Oh, easily. They, they, they could have done... All you had to do was give Rusev a title. A title. Any title. And, and Rusev Day did not go as far as it could have. Like, even with you, when they first were initially together, they were so incredibly popular. You and Jeff. 
automatic was like, just give these guys the tag belts. They're so they're the most one of the most over acts in WWE. Not just SmackDown. Yeah. In all of WWE. So completely honestly, I still think Rusev Day was a disappointment as a whole. Okay, it's, because it didn't get it didn't get as far as it could have. It's because WWE didn't even try. It's it was pretty yeah. much Zack Ryder. They were Basically, they got yeah. they naturally got themselves over with their gimmick, and WWE is just for some reason instead of adding fuel to that that glorious fire that they had and actually really selling merchandise, they refused. They to refused to. They refused to go with it. They kept putting him as a as a heel, which to, he should have been a natural face, and it just kept losing and losing and losing. It was the Zack Ryder effect. Yeah. And when they actually decide to act to do something with them, it was too late. The calendars, as fu- as popular as that was, as popular as the sh- the shirts got with the sales, it was sadly too late. And now, hopefully, we will get a triple threat United States title yeah, feud out of this one. Give Shinsuke Nakamura something to do, and give these guys something to do, because no one really, no one really wants to see a singles feud between this, these two. No. Uh, and in all honesty, a triple threat feud with Shinsuke Nakamura can actually do wonders for both for all three guys. It gives Shinsuke something to do, and it'll, if anything, give, it'll give maybe have Aiden English win the belt and give him credibility. Yep. And then have Rusev possibly win the title, win the United States title at Mania. It gives it and gives the United we, States title and credibility. And then all three all three guys get more over. Which exactly. It, which is the idea, but. You know the WWE. Yeah, you know they're gonna, they're they gonna mess this up so somehow. It'll be, it'll be Rusev versus Aiden English on pre-shows until the end of time. <laughs> That's it. So essentially, they're probably gonna go Mojo Rawley and Zack Ryder. It's Basically, like the tag team that broke up, and well, in this case, Rusev is just gonna keep beating Aiden English to he's to the point of Aiden English is irrelevant. Basically. All right. Well, hopefully that doesn't come. I'm. Since Jeff's not here, I'll I'll hope I'll pull the optimism here. But I will have that reality that WWE will mess this up possibly. But all right, now let's go on to the main show, which is the first Hell in a Cell match. Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. And before we get into that, what did you think of the Red Cell? See, I don't I don't see the big deal. In a color change, why everyone's making such a big deal out of it. The I agree. cell is the same, and the brutality. Okay, it's it's not like the match has changed because the cell looks different. Apparently, the red is from reading is that the red is actually like a rubber covering, so the wrestlers when they take the bumps off the cell, they won't get too damaged. Well. Well, I, honestly, it, it doesn't it, matter. It's still it's it's still fans being petty because w, it, well, it's because not even WWE. just it's even more than just petty. It's just people have been so angry with WWE lately. They gotta find they gotta find something to bitch about. Exactly. Where when so, I first saw it, I was like, "Huh, it's different. Is it necessary? No, but I'm not complaining about it. It's something new. I'm just like, you know what." All right, they want to do something different. Apparently, Vince came to the realization that how old the Hell in a Cell really is. So he's like, okay, let's yeah. do something new. Let's make it red. You know what? The I fa- didn't have a problem with it. The, the IWC needs something to bitch about. When it comes to WWE, correct. When it comes to WWE, and they will take any opportunity. The, they changed the color of the cell. The show's going to suck. It's not even just that. It's like, oh, this is the worst decision WWE's ever made. They changed the color of a se- of the cell. Calm down, grow, dumbass. Grow up, children. That's all I have to say about that. But Randy Orton versus Jeff Hardy. If you had to really explain this in one word, the word would be brutal. Yes, and that is why I'm getting it out of the way early. Match of the night. Really? Yes. This was the match that I enjoyed the most. From a storytelling perspective, from an action perspective, and from a Jeff Hardy nearly killing himself (laughs) perspective. 
And it was exactly what we said it was going to be. Jeff Hardy losing because of Jeff Hardy. <laughs> That's it. I wouldn't go so far as match of the night, but I will say it was the better of the Hell in a Cell matches. Easily. It was, uh, that yeah. I will say. But, but ba- my God, this match was sick. You, it was you, twisted. Th- this was exactly what a Hell in a Cell match is supposed to be. It, th- this was definitely use, not PG. You use any means necessary to get the victory. Okay, we had screwdrivers. Yes. I was about to say, dude, <laughs> I'm like... Is That's this... what happens when you gauge your ears, okay? That's like, the chance Randy you Orton take. taking a screwdriver <laughs> into Jeff Hardy's ear and pop, like, on the verge of actually tearing it. That is... is that really the means necessary to win the match or just to basically so, wow, Randy Orton is a it's twisted creepy. son of a bitch. It's creepy Randy Orton being the creepiest he could possibly creep. That's it. That, <laughs> That's that it. is twisted shit. And, and, My, and I'm just like, I... It's like... This is terribly... This is awful. I can't turn away because of it. It's like this match, like during this match, as the screwdriver bit was going on, and Randy Orton's just... You just see Randy Orton's face, and I'm like, he needs to be WWE champion immediately. (laughs) He is is enjoying this way too much. this, This is a dude who's been wanting to be a heel... Since the time he turned, he didn't, I don't think he wanted to leave the Wyatt, the Wyatt family and, and turn, and turn face at WrestleMania last year. I think he wanted to stay heel and bring out more of this shit. This is, this is, this seems like something creepy Randy Wyatt, whatever would, would be doing. Like he's channeling that into what he's doing right now. You know what the sad thing was? That could have been the perfect opportunity to turn Bray Wyatt face. And if they were to break the Wyatt, have Wyatt be the face and Randy Orton the heel. Yeah. And then have that be the twisted, just the beginning of the twisted Randy Orton. Uh, that's, but, but that is it, long that, past. There's not, there's but it's, uh, it's basically that character that he was during that time to the full extent is what we saw at Hell in a Cell, and in that creepy video on fucking SmackDown. When he was... It's, okay, before we go on to SmackDown, we gotta talk about the bit that... But also, ended the, ended Jeff, the match. Jeff Hardy being Jeff Hardy go, it sets him up on a table, goes up to the top of the ladder, and you think he's just gotta go from the top of the ladder. But no, he looks up, and you're like, oh, shit, here we go. Well, I see, <laughs> the, I see these beams, so I'm going to... Hang on to said beams. Swing back and forth to gain some momentum. Randy Orton moves out of the way as I drop 20 feet through a fucking table. Now, admittedly, Why? admittedly, okay, Randy Orton did move early. Yes, yes, he did. Like you but, still, you know, it still was the fact it, that it, it's, it's still, still gruesome. It's still d- dropping 20 feet stomach first through a table. Mm-hmm. So, and, and another... And, and another just way of how great Randy Orton is a heel is, okay, the ref is trying to call for paramedics and emergency personnel. Goddamn ref. And, and Randy Orton's like, no, ref, do your job and count to three. But, but he's hurt. Count I know. Count to three. Count to three or he doesn't leave. That's it. That is just <laughs> twisted, and that is a great heel. And then he gets the pin, one, two, three, point for us. Yeah. Based on a storytelling perspective and just the brutality of this match, put them together, and it was the perfect blend for me to be able to give this match of the night. Just brutal, twisted... I loved every second of it. This was definitely the better of the Hell in the Cell matches. I wouldn't go match of the night. And it and it got a good forty minutes. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, this this was exactly how the Hell in a Cell was meant to be used to showcase the brutality of its performers. Mm-hmm. And the fact that this match did that so well. That's the that's the reason I gave it match of the night. Does it, the pay per view is called Hell in a Cell, and that and and this embodied 
the brutality of that match perfectly. So the fact that, yeah, that's, that's all I needed to know. Okay, now here's another Scholar's Quick Talk for you. On, now let's bring the SmackDown and him possibly getting turned on the fact that the screwdriver in the ear bit, which, dude, you were just I'm, you're I'm, scaring me. I'm now. telling you, this is, this is the... That, and you just see you him. Know, next thing you know, you probably could be seeing... <laughs> if, he, if we stayed on any longer, that's probably what he could have done. And then I'm like, Randy, that's not PG. Yeah. <laughs> I was teamed with the rated R superstar. Okay, he's got me there. <laughs> yeah. But here's the scholar's quick talk. He hinted on his next victim. Who do you see being his next feud? I was kind of hoping it was going to be Daniel Bryan. That's what you're hoping? Yeah, but... The fact that what happened later on means that uh, that feud is going to continue means uh, it's going to be someone else. Um, possibly AJ after this uh, AJ Samoa Joe uh, feud is over. I would like to see that, actually. That yeah. actually wouldn't be a terrible idea. Th those are the two that I can think of I, off the top of my head. I see Dan I see AJ Styles more than Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And that's just because of what I'm, thinking, what I'm thinking is going to happen at Super Showdown, which I already said it last week. But I'll talk it again at a later show. But... If it was between those two, I probably would pick AJ Styles. Yeah. All right, moving on. We got a great match in Becky Lynch versus Charlotte for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I which I was shocked. Yeah, I honestly didn't think they were gonna do they were gonna do the change. I I thought they were gonna leave it for the women's evolution. Yeah, evolution, same year. Which which brings up a potential problem. You think <laughs> you, you know, you're thinking that they are probably just going to give Charlotte the title I, back? I at hope Evolution? they don't. I hope they don't hot potato it. I uh, mean, you would ruin whatever you've got going with Becky Lynch right now. It's so, if you did that. Hell, the whole but, story with Becky Lynch is an interesting one because no matter how hard on both Hell in a Cell and SmackDown. They're trying so hard to push Becky Lynch as this heel. Yeah, the, the which, crowd is not The crowd is it. not ha having anything that you're going with this story. Yeah, this it doesn't matter what Byron Saxon, it doesn't matter what Tom Phillips says, it doesn't matter how much, what their, pro their production videos are doing. Becky Lynch is a badass. This, she is so goddamn awesome. It, it's basically, okay, everyone has said it. But it, there's no denying it anymore. Okay, this is, Becky Lynch is the female Stone Cold. All she needs you is cannot, just an uh, authority figure. You cannot get the people to boo this woman. Okay? There is literally nothing they can do. You, the, the, even during the Alliance days, okay, you could not get the crowd to boo Stone Cold Steve Austin unless like, it was hometown boy Kurt Angle. In Pittsburgh, so uh, that was the only time he got cheered, and and Austin got booed. But other than that, you could not get the people to boo Stone Cold for nothing. Well, what? Well, yeah. She, so her those acting lessons that she reportedly got are definitely paying and off. does and does the WWE have anyone who the who the fans would cheer for over Becky Lynch at this point, I would dare say no. On SmackDown, so, no. On Raw, I probably would say Ronda Rousey. And, and I can see, like, if they did a Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch, Matt, it would be 50-50. I can see that, but... I could see it. Okay, when it comes to this, okay, they're, they're building up as Charlotte pretty much as the female equivalent of Roman Reigns right now. They're trying so desperately hard for you to cheer for you to be on Charlotte's side. 
She is the she is and the, the baby crowd, face, and the crowd isn't having that either. She is the baby face of the storyline. You are. She's the honorable one. She's trying. Mm-hmm. She's the respectable one. But be- and Becky Lynch is the disrespectful one. Oh, she betrayed her best friend Charlotte. And it's like, well, she. It's not about the friendship. It's about the championship. That's all it's about. And the and yes. I don't see. I, I can see Charlotte turning her back on anyone trying to get the championship. What the WWE this, did, how they built up Becky Lynch during those four months before the Triple Threat match at SummerSlam, they screwed any chance that they had at all at being able to turn her and and actually have the crowd boo her because she was the most sympathetic character when it comes to the SmackDown exactly. Women's Division. So so when. Charlotte stole the stole the victory at SummerSlam and won the title. What did you think was gonna happen? Uh, it was it was one of those the crowd was gonna be behind Becky Lynch no matter what she did, and this was a heel turn that was was based in reality. Like say we're best for. We're best friends. We're not. <laughs> How can you? And you know, <laughs> you, it 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 would be like when I stole that championship, and it was all the let's let's say scholars championship wise. Okay, you know that I'm going. That I've now. been going for this title for so long, I'm and it's you your finally. I'm giving you your title match. Stay away. I understand that. <laughs> it's called a... Hypotheticals. It's I, called I, a hypothetical. But the I, thing is, you are known for stealing the championship belt. So... I'm not going to steal your belt. You gave me a shot. I just did that because Jeff was being a... <laughs> Jeff was being a little girl about it. Yes. <laughs> so that what, what I'm saying is, say we're going for a title. Mm-hmm. Okay? And you know that I've been going after this title. For so long, and yet you come in and you steal my moment, my victory. Okay, what do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> Beat the ever-loving shit out of me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and you know what? The, cr- the crowd believed it. They bought into it. And because of the way that the story was told, okay, you can't not... You, you cannot. You agree with Becky Lynch. Yeah, you're on Becky Lynch's side. You agree with Becky Lynch because, yeah, you stole something I've been working for for five months. Yeah, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. And everyone else would, too. And now, <laughs> she, and now she finally got it. And now her, her crowning championship ceremony, which I love the fact. It's like, I don't need the SmackDown women's roster kind of being at a dig at Ronda Rousey. With her title uh, coronation, it's like I don't need the I don't need the SmackDown Women's roster. I just want Charlotte. He's like, and then put the t- uh, don't cut the champion off. The champion is talking. It's like you say you're the queen of SmackDown. You're the best, but this title on my shoulder says I- otherwise. I'm like God, Becky, you are just so goddamn cool. You are just so awesome right now. There's nothing they can do. There is absolutely nothing. No matter how much trash, no matter how much trash talking the comment, the face commentators they say, the praise the heel commentators will say, the video packaging. There is nothing they can do. Becky Lynch is the most over thing on SmackDown Live. And and really, quite possibly, okay, what should happen is. Your two most over people on the roster are females. Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch. Which is good. They are the faces of your company. That is what it is now. It's not Roman Reigns. As sad to say it as I am, it's not AJ Styles. (laughs) It is Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey. WrestleMania it up. Hopefully they're don't going even do way. don't even do don't even do. Uh, it's probably smart. Don't even do it in Survivor Series. Have one of them lose the title. Hmm. Have have one of them lose the title and do it up at WrestleMania. That would be interesting. 
Um, that that is a match that you don't hold at a pay per view other than WrestleMania. And now we're getting their rematch at Super Showdown, and we have. And that scares me. Mm-hmm. It really does. I, uh, I'm well, not not that, just not, yet. Su- not su- Super Showdown. I'm not scared about Super Showdown. It's if they did the rematch at Evolution, mm-hmm. that would be the moment where it's like, oh fuck, this has got to be Sasha Banks versus Charlotte all over again, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I don't even want to think about that. That's even I posted it. Speaking of Sasha Banks, I even posted a tweet. Uh, today, which I had to delete because of a certain person who, well, a certain thing that liked it. I'm like, yeah, I'm not like, I'm not having anything like this liking my statuses. After watching SmackDown, the lesson I learned here is that if you let the people who want to fight each other fight, you'll get one of them being quite possibly the most badass uh, fighter in your on your brand. But if you don't let them fight, and you don't let them fight, but instead send them to anger management therapy, they will become a tag team that no one gives uh, any shits about. And are in no, are in no significant position on the card. Hmm. In the long run, Kurt Angle really wasn't that great of a GM. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing your job well, Paige. You're doing ah. your job very well. And, and we knew it was going to come to that. I always thought that Paige was going to be a good general manager. Agreed. Um, yeah. and Kurt, that, Kurt Angle was always up in the air. It, uh, all right, but back to the Lynch. Lynch. It was good. It was awesome. It was a good match. Completely shocked by the ending. I like the uh, coronation ceremony. I like Becky just basically is like, you... You are my underling. Put the championship around my waist. This is the hottest. Sh- <laughs> this is the hottest thing going right now. It really Becky Lynch is. versus Charlotte. It's the that, hottest storyline awesome. going. And that's awesome. Now moving on to my match of the night, I which is Ziggle Tire defending the Raw Tag Team Championship against Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins of the Shield. And now the match just, itself. The it's, match it's, itself is awesome. The ma- it, that was yes. the actually reason why it was match of the night. These guys are just proving that they really are the best that WWE has. And and you can tell now, you can tell how unmotivated Dean Ambrose was before he got hurt, because now that he's back and he's got a whole new character and mindset, he's moving crisp. He's hitting all of his moves the way they're supposed to. I've never seen him do a better suicide dive than what he did into the three of them after they caught Rollins. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that was perfect. And and you know, every time before b- before the injury happened, every time he started running back towards the ropes and running towards to do the suicide dive, was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, he, <laughs> because he couldn't do it. These <laughs> these four work so amazing together. They were telling yeah. it was art of what they were doing in the ring. And and I was wor- I, w- I was worried is that because of the shield reuniting, it was going to ruin what they were doing with Drew McIntyre. But what they've done and Dolph Ziggler. I'm I'm not even I I don't care. About, I, I'll I care. be I'll be that guy. I don't care about Dolph Ziggler. I care about Drew McIntyre. I care about both of them because so, both of them are awesome together. Because I know that when they split up, Drew McIntyre's the one going places, and Drew and Dolph Ziggler's gonna fall back. That, that that's just the way. It may be of the world. It may so, be you may be right. They are setting but, up a big singles push for him. Yeah. But and, until until and then, was, we're just loving every single bit but of my this. Point, this, is the, this is the most like read. This is like the most rejuvenated I've seen Dolph Ziggler in a long time, and I love it. Yeah, but my point being, okay, I, I, even in, okay, Dolph Ziggler's always the one who takes the pin when, when they lose. So I'm like, are, are, is something, I'm, I don't want them to ruin the mystique that you have around Drew McIntyre right now. Dolph, Dolph Ziggler is the everyman. So it's like, we know what he's about. 
and all that. We know what the deal is with him. Okay, Drew McIntyre, you've had a mystique ever since you've brought him in that he's a bad... I don't think... Has he been pinned yet? I believe so. I him? Don't. Yes. I do believe so. Okay. But I mean, like, you... I thought with the shield coming back, like, that was going to overshadow everything that these two were doing. That's nope. why I did that. So, so the fact that it's Drew McIntyre... Drew McIntyre also beats Ambrose the night after. Mm-hmm. Clean. As a whistle. No bullshit. So, it's, it's like, okay. Okay. You kept the mystique going. He's still that badass... That and and Ziggler's gonna do his Ziggler thing. It's it's so it's really funny when you really look at it. Like they're put they push Dol- uh, Drew McIntyre as the psychopath. You have the lunatic and Dean. You're we're pretty much giving the feud that we didn't know we wanted. Yeah, between Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose. And those now guys are I, those guys are great. And now what I want to see? Not a singles, a regular singles match. Okay, give me a no holds barred. Exactly. Get, let them go. Let full. them go nuts. Let them go full psychopath versus lunatic. Mm-hmm. Hell, you should have given them a hell of a cell match. <laughs> Eventually, that would probably happen. But yeah, but but, but even the, like their mat, their mat singles match on Raw, it was just Dean Ambrose definitely had Drew's number, and it was just one one little. It was one mistake jumping off the tur- off the turnbuckle. Yep. That cost him, and it like it's it really didn't hurt Ambrose. No, it really didn't. And just uh, rolling in to beat the nine count into a uh, God, I keep clam claymore, claymore kick, yeah, claymore kick. I'm like, yeah, this didn't hurt Ambrose at all. Actually, it's really putting McIntyre over, which they need to if they want him to be a challenge to be fed to Roman Reigns. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> think about that. You're building someone up just to be, just to be fed to the number one guy. Sound familiar? Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Yep. Uh, I can't wait till he moves to SmackDown. I know, right? Uh, but yeah, the the spots on this ma- in the Hell in a Cell match, the tag team match was great. The, I I the love five the star, finish. The frog splash to I, uh, McIntyre's back. That like, that finish. That and the, the way they did the finish was crisp. They do the would had he just he was going for the Falcon Arrow. He was. Mm-hmm. He was go. He just did the superplex. He stands up to set up for his for his Falcon Arrow. Gets him up in the air, and, and I see Drew McIntyre standing by the ropes, and I'm like, fuck, <laughs> fuck. I'm about to go way over my limit here, but it's a. I told you him, but no I told him before the show, Drew McIntyre standing by, standing by the ropes. Dean Ambrose is nowhere to be seen, and and Seth Rollins is prone from doing the Falcon Arrow. And I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> You're just like, <laughs> goodbye, Scholars of Wrestling Championship. In with the Claymore, out with the Scholars of Wrestling Championship, and even the way that Dolph Ziggler just fell right into the pin. It was great. Just, just the, wrestling wise, this was perfect. Even storyline wise, this was perfect. This was a, this was a perfect match for me. This was this Re- is why this was match really of the, night the for only me. reason the Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton got match of the night for me is because it was in the match inspired by the card for uh, for the event. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, get, so, I get that. So it's like. It, it showcased everything that the card was meant to showcase in that one match, and it did it perfectly, so bam, there it goes. Wham, but this, bam, thank you, man. This regular match-wise, this was, this was the perfect version of that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you really want to think about it, we got two five-star matches tonight in the first hour of Hell in a Cell. And, <laughs> and now we're moving on to quite another great match. With AJ Styles successfully defending, well, successfully defending the WWE Championship against Samoa Joe, and now these, you want to... these two guys knew know how to work with, work with each other. They know how to put on a great match, and this I'm gonna put say it again. Ooh, excuse me. I'm gonna say it again. This was another example on 
a perfect way to end the match, but to keep the feud going. This, you want to talk about storytelling in your matches. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect way to tell that story. I, that's what okay, I said this, earlier. This is, no, this is my storytelling match of the night. I'll give you that. This, okay. The only thing, the only complaint I could possibly have is I don't think AJ Styles has legit won. A, like, the only match he's legit won in his title reign is the last man standing with Shinsuke Nakamura. And Everything the WrestleMania else, match. Every, and the WrestleMania match. Everything else has been bullshit. That's, that's, so, I mean, like, can we get a clean victory out of an AJ Styles title feud that it's, you're building him up to be this big shot and he's won two mad and he's won two matches of his, of his title defenses when he's had like six. <laughs> so it's so that doesn't really ring true to me, but uh, but I'll, I can argue that. But like, that's nitpicking. Yeah, that, that's so, more. That is definitely nitpicking. But match wise, okay, I I I like how they went into this. And just and I I just don't I just don't think they're booking up they're booking AJ Styles to be as strong a champion as he's making himself out to be. In promos, and maybe all that's that. the maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the idea that they're trying to go for. Yeah, but if you're trying to make him the secondary face of the company, because mm. then then it's not ringing true and it's not working in your favor the way you're booking him. But if if we're doing the AJ Styles versus the way that they did it. And it actually worked because the referee wasn't he in wasn't. a position to see the tap out. Like, yeah, I've seen times where the referee is staring at the hand as he's going down. And, and, and this, so, was, this was a good, this was a great positioning. They, they do, I mean, even the camera wise, you, like they, at first when you see it, like, did, is Joe right? Did AJ really tap? Did does he have a legit argument? And then they had that one art, that one camera this angle, is, and you see it. This was a win. Not even for the wrestlers. This was a win for WWE production, because when the fans watching at home don't even know, and and it's and it's they don't even know when it happens. Like they don't. I I didn't even see the tapping motion. Well, you don't see it from, at, at the you angle because you it's don't on the see other, it. You're seeing it from the other. Yeah, angle, the other I know, side and that's the, perfect production. That is very, per, very perfect so, production. And and knowing how shitty WWE production can be at times, <laughs> this this was a win for them, more than it was a win for the wrestlers performing the match. And now I'm really thinking about what you said about Randy Orton's potential feud of AJ Styles. Maybe that's the whole point of them making it a no DQ match at Super Showdown. But if that's the way that Samoa Joe wins the title, it's a heel. Fa it's a heel factor. You know that's probably what I, they do. I understand that, but just, I'm not. I'm not I, I don't want it to be that way either. But you know how stupid WWE creative can be, yeah, when I, especially when it comes to the heels. I I would hate if Samoa Joe, anybody else. Fine. I would hate if Samoa Joe won the, won the title by bullshit. <laughs> Anybody else, I could believe it. But Samoa Joe winning the title by interference, as, even, if it, even if it does make complete sense, I would hate the shit out of it. Oh, trust me, I would too. I feel like even now, with how he's positioned, the fact that he's absolutely right in the fact that he should be champion... Like, actually showing that he actually won the match clean, and then when he finally does win the title, it's through shenanigans? Yeah, I, I, I yeah. agree. That, that is bullshit. And, and uh, that's another thing. Okay. For kudos for produ production and the wrestlers, okay? Remember Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns in the cage. 
Mm-hmm. And the fact, that, like, they were... His, Roman Reigns' feet hit before Brock Lesnar's hit, and then you see the replay, and they really didn't. <laughs> so that's it. Whatever. So th- th- this, this was the exact way, if you're going to continue the feud... Like, when it actually works, it does work. Mm -hmm. Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar in that cage match did not work because even when they went to the camera angle to prove differently, Brock Lesnar still won. (laughs) Even though they said, Roman Reigns should be champion. No, no, he really shouldn't. Brock Lesnar's feet hit first. (laughs) That's it. Uh, I don't even want to talk about that one. Uh... Yeah, at least they're drop. They're gonna drop the family angle. They're gonna drop the Wendy. Thank God for that. That was such a that's such an <laughs> awkward feud, especially for the WWE Championship. But whatever. Daddy's coming home. Samoa Joe saying it. <laughs> Joe's your daddy now. now that's but now well, we're just that talk about creepy. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, moving on to in my opinion the worst match of the night. Yeah, this is where the card kind of really starts to bug. Right Miz, here. Miz and Maurice versus Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. Miz and Daniel Bryan, when they were in the ring, fun. perfectly fine. Fun. Yeah. Uh, Maurice and Brie Bella. The kinks were not worked out. There, there was no clearing of the ring rust in this match. No, no. The ring rust the, was ten times worse. And the ending. Oh. God, that ending oh. was terrible. <laughs> well, it's The idea. Even, it sucks even more that this, that this match in particular is to keep the Miz and Daniel Bryan storyline going, but the focus is with Brie Bella and Maurice. They were the focus of the match, and that is the problem. And when they're building the hot tag for Brie Bella. I'll say it. Just thinking about it hurts. I'll say it, and you're going to hate it. Nikki Bella. is obviously, as of right now, the better of the two, if I had to choose one. (laughs) If you had a shotgun to your head, and you absolutely had to choose one to sit down and watch, and not... and not bitch... I have a shotgun to your head right now. Nikki or Brie. The better wrestler of the two. Before the past three weeks, I would have said Brie, hands down. But then I watched this match. (laughs) And I watched the return of Nikki Bella. You might as well shoot me because I refuse to answer. The answer is clear even if he doesn't want to speak it. <laughs> okay? I would take the bullet because I would never say anything. Cause it's Nikki Bella. No. Mm. If I had to sit down, if I had to sit in front of a TV and I had a choice of a Nikki Bella match or a Brie Bella match and I could not turn off the TV, it was on loop. <laughs> At that point, I would kill myself. As of right now, as of it's it's Nikki Bella. Nikki <sighs> Bella's the better of the two. All right, I'm gonna give an answer, just because. As much as it really kills me to say it, both are trash. There's no but lie there. There's both are <laughs> trash, but if I had to choose between the two, it has to be it has to be Nikki. Just you wrestling. Got, you got wise. it. You got it. On, you got yeah. me to say it on camera, Brian. Congratulations. Goddamn relations. That's what you get for winning the title. <laughs> That's the prize you receive. Not so happy now, are you? <laughs> no, that's it. 
oh, that, oh, I'm definitely happy that I have this, that my journey to get this back on my shoulder, to get it back home. No, it that, it's, that, that makes me happy. It, it the seems fact that you like, had to give me a hypothetical like that, yeah, you piece of the, trash. The, the, <laughs> the, the only thing I can don't have them act ever. We know this, but <laughs> but oh. but. Based on wrestling training and acumen, you can tell who actually trains to get back into the ring. Which means, horribly, we're that much closer to that Ronda Rousey-Nikki Bella match. Oh, <laughs> that, we saw the card. It's, it's happening. Yeah. And it kind of, it kind of like, throws the hint on what they're going to do at Super Showdown. Yep, they're turning. <laughs> but, this this may affect the predictions for that for that particular card. No, I uh, think we're both going to be on the same page for that one because we could everyone can see it coming a mile away. Jeff, now that the Jeff card couldn't is. Jeff couldn't follow his heart even if he wanted to because <laughs> this this event showed that following your heart was not the best choice for Jeff. No, not at all. But three out of the eight matches correct. God damn fool. Yeah, <laughs> that the and just to put the ending to this match so I don't have to Tarek doesn't have to talk about it and think about anything Bella related until the next show um, I guess we can might as well throw this with throw this with the Ronda Rousey bliss match yeah that that since we brought Ronda Rousey up that ending made me want to vomit and I never I I would be fine with never seeing Maurice or Nick or Brie Bella in the ring again. Well, they're both gone. Maurice says she's going back to motherhood, and as she Bree should, is gone going back to motherhood. Now we're actually focusing on Miz and Daniel Bryan fighting for the number one contendership for the WWE Championship. Good, yeah. This is where Daniel Bryan gets his win, and we move on. And you got, and <laughs> I will I will give the Miz this one. When he said that Brie Bella only married Daniel Bryan because she thought he was going to be a successful WWE champion, and now look where he is now. I'm like, God damn, that hurt. But that could possibly be hinting at another prediction for yes. Super Showdown. But that's, that's in a few weeks. To yep. be honest, it may not be such a great idea. <laughs> To put the title on the line for you and me at that one because we're gonna pop, we're gonna probably be on the same page for a lot of that card. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. You know what? As of right now, the the title re, the rematch still stands, but we'll see how, what happens in a couple of weeks when we do the prediction show. Yeah. But all right. But basically, this uh, was, this was a tale of two matches. The the Miz and Daniel Bryan had a good Miz and Daniel Bryan match. And any the, segment with Maurice and Brie Bella was trash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as for the Ronda Rousey Alexa Bliss, it was actually, it was pretty good. It wasn't the quick match that you were thinking it was going to be, as I told you. It was. It, <laughs> it you wasn't. Were it was going to be last. It week. wasn't, and I don't think it needed all the extra bullshit on the outside of the ring. But okay, what? It was entertaining. I didn't hate myself for watching it. It actually was very. I actually do think it was their best match. Together. Oh, easily. It definitely was their best match together. Considering the other one was uh, was two minutes long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shut the hell up. It was. <laughs> I'm, give me. Let me give the, these two these two credit. Or uh, I guess, oh, I'm I guess giving them all the credit giving, when they actually the... gave when they actually gave them time and gave them a story to tell. Okay. Ronda Rousey, you can tell that she's learning how to sell at a quick rate. It made and, it made me like, especially when how I felt about this. I listened to an interview with, uh, well, not like the, I don't know if it was on the uh, Pro Wrestling Observer show or whatnot with Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer. They were shitting all over this, the fact that Ronda Rousey was giving, Alex was giving all the praise for Alexa Bliss on Raw, and it's like they're just like. She's lowering herself down to a pathetic level. I'm just going, guys, you are not giving Alexa Bliss that much credit. She really does deserve praise for what she's been doing the past couple of years. And, and you know what? Here's the deal, okay? People from the Wrestling Observer are forgetting that they are not dealing with reality. <laughs> okay? They're forgetting that they're... They're basing it 
Ronda Rousey, in reality, yes, could kick the ever-loved shit out of Alexa Bliss. Okay, we know this. This is, but this is a character. This of is a Rousey. character, and and it's sad that two pundits of wrestling, two big minds of two wrestling. big minds of wrestling, who know it's based in a fantasy land. Okay, you just you, when when it comes to us criticizing it, we just criticize the fantasy. We're just criticizing the story we're being told. We're not criticizing the real world aspect of it. Yeah. Should Ronda Rousey be beating the shit out of Alexa Bliss, Alicia Fox, and Mickey James on the regular? Yes. Yes, she should. But the story that they were telling of the ribs being hurt over the last few weeks, okay, based on that fantasy story, to the best of their ability, they gave the, per- the best performance they could. Mm-hmm. And it was entertaining. I liked watching it. Kudos. Kudos indeed. And now we got to see the Riot Squad job to, well, I, with how we were going, maybe not. Uh, we get to see the, the Riot Squad face against the Bellas and Ronda Rousey at Super Showdown, and no one will give two shits about it. Except just Ronda Rousey. That's it. All right, moving on to the main event, which is the second Hell in a Cell match, Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. To Talk the point, about some bullshit. To the point where people are questioning whether this is the worst Hell in a Cell, the Hell in a Cell ending, period. I'll, I'll tell you why I say it is the worst ending to a Hell in a Cell, period. It is a hell in a cell. No DQ. No DQ. No count out. And they threw the match out. In a there no was contest. no winner. A no contest in a hell in a cell. When Brock Lesnar F5'd Roman Reigns on top of Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns should have stayed on top of Braun Strowman. And gotten the win. Here's if the they question. wanted, if they wanted to build up the triple threat match that they that they're doing with Roman Reigns as the champion, that's how you do it. Brock Lesnar F fives Braun Strowman. Brock Lesnar F fives Roman Reigns on top of Braun Strowman. Double hitting Braun Strowman. Roman Reigns stays on top for the pin, and then Brock Brock Lesnar Brock Brock's all over the ring. And destroys everybody. Here's the question. What the hell was the point of macing Mick Foley? What was the point of Mick Foley? <laughs> in the first place. To promote the Hell in a Cell 20th anniversary documentary that they had at the end of the, at the, end of the show? Yeah, and you know what? It was actually really good. It was really good. But Mick Foley still had no place on that damn show. <laughs> and that, he I, didn't. that I didn't care about. No. Other than the messing up, messing actually counting three, which yeah, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I I'm not gonna lie, I missed it. I actually had to watch it on Botchamania to see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'm and everyone's freaking out on Twitter. The match should have stopped at the three count. It, you know he fucked up. Come on. <laughs> but what, whatever. But it's he was there to take the match. To take the May shot so the dumbass ref could come out and throw the match out. Yeah, that, that's it. That was the same ref that was wanting to throw the Randy Orton Jeff Hardy match out. Yeah. That was Stop the same it, ref. stupid referee. Stop it, ref. Get out of here with that shit. Oh my god, that ref. Uh, which, I don't even know his name. But I'm just like, dude, stop trying to call off these matches. Hell, the guys took finishing maneuvers and they took table shots. It's not like they were. It's not like Jeff Hardy's situation yeah. where he jumped. Jeff 20 Hardy feet. was dead, and you counted the pin. <laughs> and you're telling me that that, that, the, that Braun Strowman and Roman Roman Reigns can take seven F fives at one time, and you're telling me after the, one, he's after done. one, they're both done. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, I, we saw really... it at WrestleMania. We saw him kick out a five F fives. You're telling me he's done after one? <laughs> that is a load of shit. And yeah, that that referee should have came in. Roman should have stayed on top of Braun, and they both should have just counted him one, two, three. 
And here's it, the it, it wouldn't have hurt Braun taking a pin, especially after that kind of nonsense. Here's the real question. Here's the real question that should have been asked coming out of that pay-per-view. We know what happened to Seth Rollins and Dolph Ziggler. We know what happened to Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, Paul Heyman, and Brock Lesnar. I know where you're going with that. What happened on top of the cell? <laughs> I want to know, what? where did Dean Ambrose and Drew McIntyre go? What happened? To th- th- were they just chilling, watching all this happen? I have no <laughs> idea. And that is, that is a mystery that will be left... That's unsolved. that's the real question. I did. I I wanted a shot of just Dean Ambrose. Like Dean Ambrose knows what Brock Lesnar is made is it's capable, capable of. of. So he's like, yeah, I'm not is, touching is, that. Is, is Dean Ambrose on top of the cell and go, going like, you know what? <laughs> I I think I'm better off staying with this motherfucker. <laughs> with You're just this. looking down. It's like you're just like, no, I'm good. Drew's up here. just looking down and turns to Dean. Do you do do you want to try and stop this? Hey, man. I actually had a match with this guy. You do not want to cross paths with him. And and the one time they both agree, hey, yeah, we're just gonna we're just chill gonna here. S- <laughs> so you want to have a match tomorrow? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fun. That is funny. Uh, that that is hysterical. I, I yeah, want like it came, I, when it came to that ending. Bullshit. I I want bullshit. a I want a YouTube video. I want a YouTube video of of. We that, had the YouTube video that of the bit. fans being pissed off. Yeah, I don't the, give a shit about the fans. No, no, Turn no, no. that camera you, around. Like, you have you have <laughs> the footage of all the the commentators leaving. It's like, come on, man, just lift up to the top of the cell. Are they still up there? <laughs> are they st- are they just chilling? Like like they're they're playing like games up there and shit. <laughs> are they <laughs> still, are they still just trying to beat the living shit out of each other? Like all you're seeing is like they're stuck. It's like the a glitched video game where all you're they're seeing is just going like this. Just going punch and punch and punch and punch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, while, while their teammates are distro- are d- laying or destroyed on the on the floor. either but either on the announcers' tables or in the ring. Yeah, we could go down and get destroyed by Brock Lesnar, or we could we could you know just just play the punching game. <laughs> you good with the punching game? Yeah, I'm good with the punching game. <laughs> go, it's, yeah, I'm good with the punching game. <laughs> 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 But all right, that that that's telling us in the long run. The match itself before that, okay, it, was, it, it was, wasn't bad. It was it was exactly better. what it was exactly what I expected out of a Braun Strowman and Roman. I do I like that they say that. I didn't even I, I did like that the bell rang and they ran at each other. Like it wasn't like a feeling out process. Oh, they that, were like, no, like, oh, they just we, started. We have we had history. We know what exactly what start, we're capable of. They just started beating the shit out of each other, big man style. And I'm like, okay, this is what I signed up for for this I match. Will, I will say, they've had be- they've had a better match in the uh, uh, the no DQ match. Yes. Or was it a street fight? It, that same, that was same the shit. one that Braun Strowman won on pay per view, right? Mm, I. Actually, I think that was the one Roman won. Roman, uh, he, oh, Braun, Braun Strowman the, went up to the top. And, he won the ambulance yeah, match. Yeah, Braun Strowman went up to the top like a dumbass and tried to, f- and then and uh, Roman Reigns rolled out of the way into the spear, right? Like, yeah. When you look at when you look at Ro- when you look at a match with Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman and the history they've had, you you would expect a lot more in the fact that yeah, these two, the fact that these two are in a hell in a cell match together makes total sense. Yes. But you would be expecting so much more out of that. We we got a good amount, but we still should have had a lot more. Yeah, con- you're considering not, the history between these two. Yeah, but then you you also had the back then back when they were fighting before that you didn't have the outliers of McIntyre, Ziggler, and the Shield. You just had Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman brutalizing each other, and you didn't have Brock Lesnar in the background. Doing that with all those extra stuff that you knew was going to come out and come into play, I was like, I was satisfied with what we got until the dumbass ending. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I threw the match out, I was like, well, that just killed any just, enjoyment. That, <laughs> it, it didn't kill the match. It just killed. It just was like, wow, what a bullshit ending. And that's the ending of the pay per view. All right, we're going to now go with facial hair ratings. And me being the champion, I will go first. I utterly enjoyed this pay-per-view, except 
the two bit the Miz and, uh, the Maurice and Brie Bella bits, and the ending of the match of the hell the main event. Those are the only two things that really took the the event down for me. So, and if if they actually okay, if Brock if they had Roman Reigns pin Braun Strowman, I would have let the Brie Bella Maurice thing slide and given this event a goat face. Yes. It was that enjoyable, but. The fact that they they knew what they were going for with this ending. The fact that it was a it was the second event in a row. They pulled the, they pulled the ending and immediately ended just to get just so they didn't have to get the crowd the footage of the crowd pissed off at the end. Instead, we get video footage from people there saying, chanting, "This is bullshit." And yeah, it it really was. This really was bullshit. So it took a level down. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Simple four out of five. Full beard. Yeah, it's it's the same thing with the same reasoning. I'm like, you you ruined the credibility of a Hell in a Cell match by co- by throwing a match out and calling it a no contest. First time you, you ruined his, it. First time in history. Like I don't know that, if that I'll ever be, has ha- that has ever I, happened. I don't know if I'll be able to look at a Hell in a Cell match the same way again because it's like, oh, we can have no contest. Yeah, we can actually now. end the match. Yeah, so, that, so it's that is like bullshit. You screwed. You didn't. You didn't need to like Braun Strowman could have taken that pin and he would not have been harmed in the end. Exactly, and I don't even think the crowd would have gone. This is bullshit if Roman got that pin in that fashion. Exactly. So it's so it's like the WWE knew what was. Knew what they were doing when they said they were gonna have a no contest in a Hell in a Cell match. So here's a giant fuck you. You had a goat face, and it you was... get a full beard because you ruined the sanctity of a Hell in a Cell match, which is there must be a clear winner. Exactly. There's it doesn't. Nothing... It doesn't stop the bullshit that can happen in a Hell in a Cell match, but there must be a clear winner. There's no such thing as a no contest in a Hell in a Cell match, except now, hey, there is. Now you can, now you can, and that, and like you said, that actually hurts the Hell in a Cell match itself. Yeah. I won't basically think, oh no, this could possibly end in a no contest because I don't want. I think they've hopefully learned their lesson. Don't ever do that again, you stupid idiots. But it'll always be. It'll always in be the in the back, back of, of your mind. mind. Exactly. All right. Well. That's what we th- that's what we think. That's what we thought of Hell in a Cell. And now we want to know what you, the audience, think. What would what what's your facial hair ratings for Hell in a Cell? Uh, what did you think of the storylines going on after on Raw, SmackDown for the builds for Super Showdown? Are you looking forward to Super Showdown? Um, if you like if you like what you heard from us, like this video, subscribe to our channel. And you can find us on our Facebook page. Just look up Scholars of Wrestling. And if you want to get in touch with us personally, you can find us on our Twitter machines. The official for Scholars of Wrestling, at ScholarsOW. You can find me, the Scholars of Wrestling champion, and Mr. Scholar in the Bank, which is right now on hold. I don't have the briefcase now because I don't need it because I have this beautiful belt on my shoulder. And it, don't worry, when I beat you in the rematch, you'll still have it till June. Oh yeah, I still have it. <laughs> but yeah, I still have that. So I am a very or is happy it May now? right now. Who the fuck knows when the Money in the Bank pay per view is? They change the month every year. I, I, I still <laughs> I still think it's gonna be June. Okay. All right, but yeah, you can find me at the Avataric. Brian, where can they find you? You can find me crying into my bottle of booze in picture format. <laughs> Crying over the loss of my Scholars of Wrestling Championship at Atomic Beanpole. And you can find Scholar Jeff at I'm Robbie Rage. But until then, thank you all for joining us tonight. And we are the Scholars of Wrestling, and you have just been schooled. You're You're welcome. welcome. See you all next week for hopefully less bullshit. (laughs) What do you think that's going to happen? It's WWE. More bullshit always. (laughs) That's true.